Good day, viewers. You are welcome back to my channel. As you already know, my name is Israel. First of all, I must appreciate those that have been subscribing to this channel. May God bless you richly. Please come in to subscribe. It's your continuous subscribe subscription that keeps this channel going. Once again, thank you very much. Now, today's discussion or today's talk is actually a practical class. And the topic of today's class is volumetric analysis. In volumetric analysis, I usually use a method of quantitative analysis using volume measurements. An area of interest here is titration. Titration uses the method of volumetric analysis. And titration could be an acid versus a base or a transcarbonate form or a reducing agent against an oxidizing agent, in which case we call it redox reaction. Whichever method, whichever solutions you are using in this topic, they must all be standard solutions. A standard solution is a solution whose concentration is accurately known. All these solutions you are seeing on the table, they are all standard solutions. This is a solution of acid, you can see the label, why this one is that of base. This one is just water, which you are going to use to wash some of the solution, some of the um, apparatus. Now this, known as a beaker, is a large size. These ones are beakers too, but they are smaller size. Why this is the conical flask. Here you have a pipette. The pipette is here, it's calibrated at 25 mil. It is used to carry a specific volume of solution, in which in this case is a base. Why this one is known as a burette. Burette is calibrated from 0 to 50. It is used also as an instrument in titration. This one is known as the rectal stand. And this one is the clamp. This one is just a paper. Most of we call it white tie. So long as it's white, it's white. It tends to know the accurate time when there will be color change. And this one is known as the funnel, which we use to introduce the solution into the burette. So having known that, like I said, this is an indicator. Because our titration today is going to be a strong acid versus a strong base. We use metal orange. However, you can also use any other indicator, anyone is workable. Then this one is a dropper. Let's get started. We are going to clip it. This form, just wanted to start it from the scratch. Okay, we have clipped it. The next thing is to introduce our burette. Remember, this calibration must be facing you so that you're going to determine when naturally there was a color change. The purpose of the indicator is to know when the color change arises because. We are dealing with a known quantity of one of the solution, a known, con a known concentration. See, having known the concentration of one, we want to determine the concentration of the other using this indicator. So, first of all, we pour the acid into the burette To pour it, what you do first of all is to rinse. You rinse a clean burette with the solution to be put in them. In this case, this is acid. So we rinse it with the acid. You don't wash. If you say you wash, there will be no mark for you. It's to wash with water, but we are not interested in that. You, you rinse with the acid solution to be introduced into it. That is what you normally do. Then let's introduce the acid now using the funnel. Don't ever say you wash. You rinse with the solution to be placed, to be poured into it. Or to be using it. You need to watch it while you are adding. To the maximum concentration while you are adding. Watching the zero mark. Okay. It's already at the zero mark. To start, please. The first thing you do is to remove air bubbles. There's always air bubble here. So you first of all flush out so the air bubble is gone. You must remove air bubbles. Since we have removed the air bubbles. And it's still above zero mark. What you now do is to reduce the concentration, is to reduce the volume. You'll be watching it to get to zero. Okay, it's at zero mark now. This one is called the conical flask. You don't watch the conical flask with acid or base. You rinse with water. It must always be neutral. This is here. This one is too is, is, is too low, so let's increase the height. Okay, so it's properly fixed. Good. Remember, it's on the right tie. 
for clear visibility of color change. Then you now bring the base. Maybe the base, you draw in small, small quantity. You use this small quantity to rinse it, just by turning it round. By rinsing it, you pour it into the solution. To the solution you are not going to use. Then you now start your work. Remember, there is a pink mark here. In some carpets, maybe yellow, but usually it's pink in color. It must not exceed or below be below it. it, must be at the exact mark. As you can see, it's reducing, trying to make sure it's on the mark. Trying to make sure it's on the mark, exactly on the mark. And now introduce it to the, this chemical flask and release the pressure on it. See, so it's moving, everything is pouring inside. Good. Now, if you look at the pipette, you see that there's still something that looks like a drop. You must not blow it off because the manufacturer of this pipette has already calib uh, calibrated in such a way that it will always remain one drop. If you blow it off, you have increased the volume. That's another precaution. Do not blow the last drop off. Second precaution, ensure you use a white tire. So I already introduced it. The next thing is to add the indicator. Third precaution, remove the funnel before starting your titration. Usually about four precautions is what they normally ask. This is a dropper. Two drops. Don't the rest. This indicator, like I told you, until you see the color is yellow. I now start the titration. No need to look at the 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 the, the, the readings from the direct. Once the color changes, you will know. It's almost changing. It is a change to orange yellow to orange. So you now look at the value, 21.3. So you now take your readings. So take your readings to score as well, man. Remember this, exam, if it's an examination, but even if it's not, do what is right. First of all, because most schools don't use the same volume of pipettes. So use 25, some use 20, 20. Therefore, you must indicate your own. That's where the mark starts. Volume of pipette. 25.00 cmq. This is where the one mark starts. Then you now draw the table. To draw the table, give it a heading. Titration table or title values. You see, then draw your table. Let's rule the line in case you have another calculator. Put that way. You see, um, if you are, I'm going to use four tables. There's a reason for it. If you have three tables, it's perfectly correct. So rough. You must not cancel it because you may use it at the end of the day. First, second, third. This is final direct readings. Initial direct readings. Centimeter cube. Cubic centimeter. Meter cube. Then this volume of acid used, centimeter cube also. So our first reading here, we feed it to zero plus 21.30, two decimal pay or the, the loose mass. Then let's we fill it again, the second time. And let's take our second reading. You have already gotten this, you have to discard it. This is our first. After discarding it, you rinse with water. Always with water. Because it must be kept neutral. Then you pipe it, you pipe it again. Make sure you don't mess it up. Do the base.
You don't need to rinse this the second time. Okay, okay. You don't need to rinse this the second time because you've already rinsed it the first time. So it will serve you throughout, except you change the base solution. Which will lead to the chemical flask. You can see the last drop is still there. So, before I start, what I need to do is to top the acid. Since I still have enough acid, I now introduce more acid into the bread. Remember the first guy we took? Must maintain it throughout. So it has passed. Okay, just exactly at the zero mark. No need to reduce it. This analysis solution is getting reduced. So what you now do, introduce indicator again. Two drops. Take it back. Swell it, shake it. Then start titration. I have to be very, very careful. So we have it again, orange. So again, this time around is 21. 21.00. Since we still have enough, let's just start it from zero. Change our 21. All you need to do again is to add water and rinse to make it a neutral solution to make the, con the, the, the conical flask neutral apparatus so I introduce acid again to top it okay zero mark again what I need to do, remember, I don't need to rinse this thing again. This uh, pipe it again. I just drain the solution into it. You can see the air bubbles. You must remove air bubbles. That's the fourth precaution. Remove air bubbles, air bubbles from both the pipettes and the burette. Not from one of them. If you say from one, it's not marked for you. You must remove it from the two. So the way I remove it, you see the air bubbles, I remove it, it has gone. You just shake it a little, it will go. Then reduce the quantity to get to the 25 mark. I'm going down, accurate. Then I'll put it, introduce it. I like the flow, the soul. You can see the last drop is there. Never blow it with your mouth. So I introduce the indicator again, two drops, one, two, we turn the rest back, you see it is yellow, I start the titration, one more time. Once it's getting close, then I start using one, one drop. That's how the teachers do their own. That's why their result is always accurate. You see, it has changed again to orange. You can see the color. So here, I have 21.1. 21.10. Good. Oh, to that more places. When I look at it, assuming I don't have acid again, I don't have acid. Instead of looking for where to take acid if I don't know the own is contaminated. My neighbor, as it's an exam condition, I don't need to bother myself. In as much as not up to 20, 25, because the calibration is from zero to 25 to 50. So I will just use this one as my initial. That's why I made the fourth table. This one will now become 21.10 CMQ. So I, all I need to do is to discard this. 
rinse with water and just tap, continue my titration instead of dragging for making noise. There's no bees, there's no bees. I'll take it from my neighbor. I'll just start from there. Very careful and make sure you don't talk while you are titrating or laugh. If not, you rush into your mouth. Okay. Then I turn it again and throw it. It will be the last titration. However, you do three readings and they are concordant. You don't have a problem. You use two of them. The minimum of two instead of wasting time for the fourth one the two they are marking you see it it should be the last i just start from here Has changed color again to orange. In this case, is 42. 42.2. 42.2. 42.20. So this is all I need. What I need to do is to subtract. So you must subtract all one zero. This one, two, one zero, twenty-one, zero zero, twenty-one. And this is 21.30. These are the readings I have. What I will do is to look for the one that is concordant. That concordant means it must not give up by plus or minus 0 0.2. Look at it again. Plus or minus 0 0.2. If you go beyond it, you start losing mass. That is what you mean by concordant. Like this. If I have to use these three are okay. If I include this, the difference between 21.3 and 21.00 is 0 0.3, so I lose mass. I can either use these two for four mass, or I use the three, one, two, three, because the difference is not much. So my average can either be average, average volume of acid yield, 21.00 plus 21.00 over two, give you 20. 42.00 over 2, give you 21.00 CMQ. This one will give you a mark, a mark. And each of these table is 4 4 marks they will give you. Each of these that I even use is 4 4 marks. Or I will take this 21 and 21.00 and 21.10. It will still give you the same mark. In which case I'll have or but you must use one. Don't put all your own. 21.00. 0, 0 plus 21.10 over 2. Read this me 21, okay, 42.10 over 2. This me 40, 21.05 CMQ. If you see any, the maximum mark. Then lastly, I can use the theory. In which case, I can also have 21.30 plus 21.10 plus 21.10 over 3. Because I'm using 3 values now, I can divide by 3. So now the 21.00 plus 21.10 plus 21.10 give you 63.20 63.20 over 3 gives you divide by 3 give you 21.066 21.066 if you leave it like this, you deduct mass. You have to use 
to decimal place 21.07 cmp. You still earn the two marks. Then the last part where you can also earn the final marks is if you decide to use 21.30, then you must use 21.10. Lastly, or 21.30 plus 21.10 over 2 gives you. Because if you deduct them, it's exactly plus or minus 0 0.2 range. So you don't lose much. 21.30 plus 21.10 will give you 42.2. 42.20 over 2 gives you, sorry, 42.4. Divide by 2 gives you 2120 21.20 CMT. So, friends and viewers, these are the ways you can carry out your titrations from beginning to the end and give yourself accurate readings. With this, you are sure of getting your 11 months. There are usually 11 months assigned to this. But mind you, you cannot use the title value of or the end point from another school or what you get online. If you do, if it's different from the one, you, every school have their own endpoints. You use the one from another school, you are sure going to lose a lot of marks because they are going to compare compare your table with the one of your school, which the teacher will always submit. So this one is for education purpose, for you to know how to draw your table and end accurate or uh, maximum, maximum score in any of the examination bodies. Thank you for viewing this channel. I'm highly impressed that many of you are subscribing. Please help me share it to your friends. As you already know, this will go a long way to assisting you to have a better result. Because this one, this, this alone will score you 11 marks. Thank you very much and God bless you.